Mr. Attorney. Uh, I fail to recognize any connection whatsoever between the issues at hand and the line of questioning just I uh, am not going to sit here and uh, undergo a, a lot of meaningless and repetitious and pointless questioning. Well, I don't understand your question. I don't understand the words in your question. I'm going to instruct myself not to answer. And were you involved at that time with the acquisition of any products for the H. Robbins Company? I was not. So you had no involvement with respect to the acquisition of any products in June of 1970, correct? Uh, maybe I better ask you to clarify for me what you're thinking about when you use the expression any involvement. That covers a multitude of, of activities and, and is, a, is a question apart from the matter of responsibility for acquisition. Uh, if you would clarify what, me what you're saying or asking about, I, I can re try to respond more clearly. Glad to do that, Doctor. Now, what do you understand any involvement to be with respect to an acquisition? Well, it's not me that originated the question or the, the phrase any involvement, I, and I'm not quibbling with whatever it is you have in mind when you use it. I'm just trying to respond appropriately to your question, and I did not want to mislead you by by misinterpreting what you mean by any involvement. And that's what I'm asking you. Okay, well, then if, if you, I don't want to play games. My secretary who sharpens a pencil to make a note uh, for somebody who is looking up a telephone number for a company to call to see where they might be available could be said to have some involvement in the acquisition. That's ridiculous and, and, and silly, and I would trust you would agree with me. Now, how far along the, the pathway of, of such silly definition to the extent of final responsibility for the acquisition or do you have in mind when you say any involvement that that's I don't know what I have in mind it would depend on the on, on the question okay so I, apparently your definition of any involvement with the acquisition of a given product goes from a secretary who sharpens a pencil and gives it to his or her superior up to the person who writes the check and says, let's go ahead and buy the, the property. Uh, no, no, I'll object to that question. That's an improper characterization of the record. The difficulty you're experiencing arises from the fact that you have chosen an open-ended term, which the doctor has some difficulty uh, answering because he doesn't know what you mean, and now you're attempting to have him define your term. I would suggest to you that the best way to do it is for you either to define it or drop it. I would add to the objection that uh, Robbins objects to the form, and we'd also object to it on the grounds of relevance, since the doctor has testified that he was not involved in the acquisition of the Dalcon Shield. Yeah. Doctor, any involvement with the acquisition of a product? Right. Let's work with that phrase. If you assume, Doctor, that it involves gathering information in order to pass it up or pass it down to any individual in order for that individual to make a judgment as to whether a product should or should not be purchased within the field of that individual's responsibility, would that help you? in answering the question. Not necessarily. In June of 1970, did you have any involvement with the purchase of any product 
for the A.H. Robbins Company. I'll object to the question until you define your term. As I just defined any involvement. Well, if I may comment and maybe help your questioning a bit. Uh, in May, I was asked on two occasions to do two things that related to the gathering of some information which was felt to be of assistance to the company in its making an ultimate decision as to whether it wanted to acquire the Dalcon Corporation or not. Mr. Robbins, my name is Dale Larson, and I'm a Minnesota lawyer, and I represent uh, women who have been diseased wearing the Dalcon shield, and they've suffered the loss of organs, uh, they've suffered uh, an inability to bear children. Uh, many are nulliparous women, that is, women who had never uh, had an opportunity to bear children. Uh, today, I'm going to be asking you some questions bearing upon the Dalcon Shield on their behalf. Those things have not been proven. As a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Robbins, as chairman of the board of the E.H. Robbins Company, is it your testimony <clears throat> here today before the ladies and gentlemen of the jury that the company has absolutely no intent whatsoever to warn Dalcon Shield wearers? that they have a higher risk of pelvic inflammatory disease with the Dalcon shield than with other IUDs. You don't have any intent to warn about it as we sit here today in front of the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, correct? <coughs> we like we have always acted responsibly and with integrity, I might add. I don't, I don't see how we can warn about something we don't believe is there. Okay, I, I'm Judge Lord from Minnesota. Here was the consent uh, of both parties who agree that for the purpose of this deposition, I should preside with the same powers as though the deposition were taken in Minnesota, and now let us proceed. I direct you to make a more responsive answer, sir. We can't wait all day. Excuse me. That is not the answer to the question. Uh, sir, you're not supposed to argue. Answer the oh, question. I'm Are you making a speech or an argument? Change the rules. You may object. Thank a you. Very brief statement of your objection. No lectures. No argument. All right, yeah. Thank you. May I object to that last question? Yes, overruled. <laughs> How could you object to the form of the question on a straight question like that? Overruled. Proceed. Mm -hmm. uh, the objection is ridiculous. Proceed with the questioning. If you're bumping him, I'm going to ask that you move down here. I didn't touch him, Your Honor. No, oh, please. no, I, he hadn't touched no, no, me. I did not touch uh, him. Your elbow was pushed. Well, on the contrary, Your Honor. He moved his arm. I on the contrary, Your Honor. Please do the that. Witness. Okay. Let's proceed. Okay. I sat back so the witness Move your feet over, too. I, I don't like what's going on here. 
the witness we have, at all. We have I move back two, uh, so you three can feet see. Apart. Well, I will proceed. move as far as you say, Judge. You're all right now. Proceed. There are so many causes of pelvic infection that uh, there are innumerable causes which can occur whether or not any IUD has been used that it's impossible for me to judge or for anybody else without Where did you learn that? I have been told this. I, I am not an authority, obviously, but I have been told it. By whom? By the, our doctors that uh, inflammatory conditions can occur from any one of several hundred causes. Like uh, I've been told that uh, uh, frequent sex partners can cause it. I've been told that uh, gonorrhea can cause it. I've been told that other things can cause it. And uh, so I'm, I'm not an authority, but I'm told. That. May I ask this question? And Yesterday you were telling about all of the things that could cause pelvic inflammatory disease, I said right? I've been told that. Yes. Right. Now, but you were never told about this tail string and its potential for wicking of disease. Is that right? I'm sure that having seen some of these documents, I was uh, aware that this had been suggested. Well, did the same people who told you about all the other causes of inflammatory disease tell you anything about the tail string causing disease? No, I don't recall it, Jack. All right. Could I ask you a question? If you knew of something that would cause a woman to get pelvic inflammatory disease, and it was within your power to stop it, would you stop it? Oh, of course. How much proof would it take before you would conclude that it might be wise to warn them of the possibility? Well, Judge, I think the thing that is so confusing to me on all of this questioning... Answer my question, please. That okay. was a concise, plain question. I'm sorry. Would you mind repeating yes. the question? How sure, how positive do you have to be before you warn? Well, you have to be positive because there's so much conflicting testimony on the part of physicians. Uh, some say one thing and some say exactly the opposite. You I think it's appropriate to take the physician who is least concerned and follow his advice. We're in a life-threatening situation of this kind to take the physicians, if they're substantial physicians who are very concerned, to follow their advice and warn. He said, your health man be in jeopardy. I have invoked every kind of protection for your health. Now, should pr someone have done that for the women who were wearing this device? Uh, doctor, let me tell you something. May, will you listen to me, please? There's a strange reversal of roles here again today. You seem to be in charge. You call the recesses, you answer the questions you want to, and you make such comments as you want to. That's entirely inappropriate. The judge will be the referee here. You answer the questions. If you don't do that, consequences may follow. But Proceed. Yeah, uh, let me tell you, that I, I don't... I don't have any deadline for departure here tonight. I can stay till Senior. Saturday night if I need it.
Did you ever discuss with your wife what information she received from her gynecologist at the time she had the Dalcon shield inserted? I don't recall that I did, no, sir. Did you ask her whether her gynecologist inquired as to how many sex partners she had at the time the Dalcon shield was inserted? I didn't ask her that. I don't know whether her gynecologist inquired or not. That, again, is something between my wife and her gynecologist. Did you ask her whether or not the gynecologist inquired into the frequency of sex that she had? Again, I don't know whether he made that inquiry. I don't know what inquiries were made. I'm sure he made the inquiries he felt were appropriate to did my wife's situation. Her, did you ask her whether her gynecologist inquired into whether or not she engaged in anal or oral sex at the time the Dale Kahn shield was inserted? Again, I don't know what my, gyneco my wife's gynecologist may have discussed with her. I well, think it's a type of thing that... Uh, is between the gynecologist and my wife as his patient. You're aware that all of those questions are asked of women who bring claim against the Robbins Company as a result of injuries they have sustained while wearing the Delcon shield, aren't you? That's correct. Okay. And I think they're appropriate questions to be asked. If my wife might fail to be asked those questions, I think, in terms of litigation. You've got your choice between this multi-filament one that can whip bacteria up the interior, may result in the loss of your penis or scrotum, and the other one is a monofilament, yeah, solid. Like, like, obviously, I'm interested in a, uh, a suture uh, which does not entail my getting a disease or getting injured by it, yes, sir. And you would want to know what the manufacturer knew with respect to the fact that that multi-filament string might wick, might cause bacteria to get into your reproductive organs and may result in the loss of them. That's a risk factor you'd want to know about, correct? If it would cause disease, in fact cause disease, yes sir. Yes, and it wouldn't make any difference to you if it caused disease in one man who lost his penis or a hundred or a thousand, would it sir? In terms of one person, I'm not sure I, I would be interested in it as an individual, yes, sir. <laughs> sure, I'm sure you would, sir. Could you state your full name for the record, please? Roger Lewis Tuttle. Could you spell your last name, Mr. Tuttle? T U T T L E. Okay. There ever been documents destroyed by the Robbins Company concerning the Dale Con Shield? aware of documents that have been destroyed by the Robbins Company concerning the Dalcon Shield? Yes, sir. With respect to those documents which you have and which were ordered destroyed, do you know how they were destroyed? Yes, sir. How? Robbins had a forced draft furnace designed to 
destroy contaminated product. And I was told that the documents were burned in that furnace. But you knew these documents bore on the defectiveness or non-defectiveness of the device. Broadly, yes. You knew that in that sense they bore upon Robin's responsibility to warn women and doctors, correct? Correct. Are you aware that the top management of the A.H. Robbins Company has testified in the consolidated proceedings before His Honor Judge Lord that most of them just don't recall what they knew at a given point in time or they don't know if they received a memorandum even if their name was on the distribution list? No, sir. But you do know that you were told to search these top management individuals' files and get sensitive documents out which may show that they had some knowledge or direct involvement in the Dalcon Shield, correct? Correct. Has Robbins threatened to bring action against you? Yes, sir. Have they threatened to go to the Board of Professional Responsibility in Oklahoma? Yes, sir. Have you put your own job at jeopardy by coming here to testify? There's no question about it. And I guess the final uh, thought uh, that struck me was uh, Judge Lord's courage. So Judge Lord gave you the courage to come? Uh, yes, sir.